I've seen the Lord move mountains and he wants to do it again. And that is what this show is all about. Are you in a position that you constantly feel like you're being held back from your full potential, your dreams of who you are and what you want to do with your life? Do you feel held back by responsibilities? Struggles over financial needs or health and relational issues tend to keep you from moving forward into the kingdom of God. They're like these huge mountains. Today's show is all about the power of faith and how you can too step into it. It is about getting out of the rut and stepping into the abundant faith that God has for you. The title of this message is How to Have Fearless Faith. Many calls for prayer come in due to the caller being stuck in a rut and not being able to see a way out. In their heart, they know they were born for much more than where they are at. But life has beaten them down over and over and over again so much that they do not know how to have the breakthrough that they are longing for. Part of the problem is their own words of defeat that they are declaring over themselves that cause results that are self-proclaimed. Words have power, even the negative ones. We tend to identify with the symptoms instead of who God created us to be, aren't we? For example, many of us have said the words, I am too busy. The definition of busy is having a great deal to do. Basically, that means we're not enjoying life anymore. When you hear the response, I am too busy, it shows a lack. It shows a problem. It shows a struggle. You don't know how to continue. And to be really honest with you, I was guilty of that just till last week, till God pointed it out to me. Every time I would speak to my assistant, Janice, I'm so busy. I'm very busy. I'm too busy. And everywhere you go, even in the hotel yesterday, people were saying, I'm so busy. But when you say it over and over again, and it becomes an excuse for what you can't get to that is more important than anything else than you're doing, there is something wrong with that picture. And yet we, we use excuses around it why we are that busy. But words have power. For example, if you say, I am tired early in the morning, guess what? You will be tired all day long. What I say now, if I'm actually on the tired side in the morning, I will say, I'm just gonna take it easy this morning and it's gonna be a great day. Everything is going to be okay. And it changes the attitude inside of you in such a way that it totally changes everything. It's the same with being too busy. I have a childcare in my home with 12 to 14 children on a daily basis, five days a week. And then I have also, I'm a real estate agent. I have two ministries, Dare to Believe Big, where my heart completely is at, and Love Your Life Ministries with Barb TV, the real reality show. Lots going on at all times. On top of that, my son moved in with us with his two girls and all the commotion with the children being there seven days a week, which is great, but everything is a busyness. So what I found myself doing, saying everywhere, all the time for the last 10 years, I'm busy, I'm too busy, I'm sorry I didn't get to it, I will get to it later, I am busy, I have an excuse. And I said it over and over and over and over again. Guess what happened? I stayed busy, I was busy, I felt busy, I lived busy, and I was proud of being busy. Busy became my identity. And I know you have that too, we all do that. So in my mind, I wanted out in a way that I was going to do what I wanted to do instead of doing all those things before what I wanted to do that I made a priority at all times. So how do you flip that around? Well, I started to having hope to be completely away from the childcare, completely away in what I fully want to do, 100% in the kingdom of God and to love and enjoy my family. By thinking about that, by working on that, by doing that, I started to have hope in what it would look like, started to pray about it and started to talk to God while I would work with him or pray towards him and ask him for help in how to fix the problem. Because once you're in that circle, 
you don't know how to get out. You don't know what to do and you don't know what is next and even how to get there because we all need money to live. So I prayed for it and asked it. So I started making myself more busy by planning more things to create an atmosphere with around me, not of lack, but in preparation of where I wanted to be. So when that moment would come, I would be ready for it. And this is what I did. I did weekly mentoring with my mentoring. During traveling, I would listen to sermons. I would do my prayer walk every day and walk to the vineyard across the street and pray and declare and decree over my family and over the ministry what I wanted to get to and what I wanted to do next. I would constantly do go to conferences on a regular basis, at least one or two per year, to educate myself and grow more in everything I could. And that's the moment, my friends, when I started realizing last week on a Monday morning, while I'm in the bathroom, just took out, got out of the shower, and I'm looking at the wall, and there is this text on the wall that stares right back at me. And this is what it said. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. And my attitude of frustration of not getting where I wanted to be changed into an attitude of giving it to the Lord, knowing full well I had to work 10 and a half hours that day in the daycare with great lovely children. And I said that day, something different. There is no lack. There is no busyness. Everything will fall in place because this is the day the Lord has made. And I choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. And after the third or fourth, that was day three, I had put in about 33 hours of work already before I did all the other things. Something was different that day. There was a peace around me the whole day because attitude changed to gratitude. And today I want to share with you how you can step into faith and the incredible thing that God did next in my life that he wants to do in your life too, to turn everything around, to help you fulfill that dream that he has completely given you passionately with a zeal in a way that he wants you where you want to be as well. I would love to pray for you. So if you would like prayer and if you are stuck in that rut right now, listen to what is coming and just know this, that God is bigger than the mountain that you're fighting with. Contact us, 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org. We'd love to pray for you. And know this, the next part will show you the answer, what happened to me that can happen to you too. Stay tuned. Barb TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories, and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life, and He wants you to have all the benefits. So here I was stuck in a rut for so long and so many of you have been in that position. But the key note is the first thing that we need to do is to get gratitude instead of attitude. One way we're going to do that is by starting to thank God every day for 10 things. Even if you have to move, make them up, it doesn't matter because you're as busy as I am. So there is a moment when you start trusting God and you start accepting where you're at. And that is usually the moment when you surrender that God is going to turn things around. And that is what happened to me. 
So my husband received, just within the last couple of weeks, a decent amount of inheritance. Because of this inheritance, we had two choices. We just gonna cash it out, or we're going to invest it. If we would have invested it, then we would, or if we would have cashed it out, we would have lost 41.3% of it, about. Huge amount of money. So we chose to invest it. And when you do a 1031 exchange, so you pay less taxes, when you do that exchange, there is very strict rules. So we had 45 days to invest the money. But in two and a half weeks, what we were going to invest it in fell completely apart. And we had to start all over. We only have about two and a half weeks left now to work this out, two and a half to three weeks. And it was a good size amount of money. When we found the places, it was completely different than we intended to. We ended up buying old buildings from 1939 with lots of work and 17 tenants in it as an investment. When we bought all this, we knew this was the time that we finally could stop the childcare that we had in our home after about 30 years. It's huge. Because everything I prayed for, everything I asked for, all that I wanted to do, all my shortcomings, all of a sudden have become this incredible opportunity to step fully into what I've been passionate about all my life, and that is you. To show you the kingdom of God, to show you how to get out of a rut, to show you and teach you that God still heals today, God still answers today, and God still delivers today, and God still provides today. And it came in such a different way for us than we ever anticipated. With all that, the biggest hold in me was that I was struggling with the idea that if we would move three hours up north to Reading, and everything would change for us, and we still would have to sell our house, and we would have to let go of everything we were familiar with, and move into a complete other area. What about my son, who was living in the granny unit behind our home, and our two granddaughters, who were living literally in our home? What was that all going to look like? And I asked my son Peter about that, and I said, Peter, my biggest struggle in moving forward by moving out of the area is you and the girls because we took you all in and yes, you are paying rent and you're helping out with everything, but we took you all in because we wanted in a way to have stability, especially for the four and seven year old granddaughters. We wanted stability for them. If we leave now, what will happen? And he confronted me with that. And he said to me, mom, where is your faith in? And what is the worst case scenario? And as I fumbled through the answers of those two and wasn't really even clear that moment after a busy day, I kind of just said some things, but in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep. And I started praying to God and I said, God, if my son and grandchildren would not live in our house, would I move forward with this move? And there was an instant yes in it. And then I reflected again on the questions that he had asked me. And he had asked me, where is your faith in mom? And then I realized my faith had become for my children and grandchildren in myself more than relying on God because I now in my mind and my husband were providing the stability for the children to have it as easy as possible while his wife no longer wanted to be married. And you see the pain in the children. You see the struggle. You see the devastation. You see the issues that they're working through. And you see all that. And as a mom and a grandma, that's the moment that you just want to fix it. And what started as the right thing to do, now almost a year later, became us holding ourselves back from where God wanted to take us by saying, no, no, we need to do this for the family. And my son caught it. Then his second question was, what is the worst case scenario that will happen? The worst case scenario is that they don't move with us to Reading over a period of time. 
and the worst case scenario is that we lose all the money that was a gift to us anyways. <laughs> We're not worse off. We're still in a good situation. God is still in charge of it all. And then I saw this scripture that just came to life for me. And I want to share this with you because you that might be in a rut right now or stuck in moving forward or comfortable where you're at, I really want you to pay attention to this. And it says in Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 36. And he gave them this illustration. This is Jesus talking after people confronted them saying, why are you disciples not fasting that are with Jesus the way we are? And they were confronted. But Jesus answered in a way that he was the bridegroom. And in front of the wedding party, there is not a time for fasting at that time. But that time will come later. But he knew the real questions. And then he responded with the following. And he gave them this illustration. No one rips up a new garment to make patches for an old worn out one. Do you catch the familiarity with the situation there? If you tear up the new to make a patch for the old, it will not match the old garment. And who pours new wine into an old wineskin? Who puts old ways into the new direction that you're going and expects it to work? If someone did the old wineskin, would burst and the new wine would be lost. New wine must always be poured into new wine skin. Yet you say the old ways are you, uh, the old ways are better. And you refuse to even taste the new that I bring. That was my situation, wasn't it? That is your situation. Have you noticed what worked with God before? We plan to use it in our own confidence over and over again. Stay tuned, there is so much more. I'll be right back. Peace is beautiful. However, finding peace is not always easy, but the result when you get there is life changing. Are you ready to dream bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger, and live bigger? If you want to break free from dull Christianity and transform to a vibrant, active believer, what are you waiting for? Dare to Believe Big teaches you to believe like never before. It is time to grow, evolve, and expand. Discover four words that can transform your life. Are you ready to build a relationship with God? God has incredible plans for you. It is an exciting opportunity, and you can live each day with a high expectation of what God will do next. Don't wait any longer and sign up for your new free membership. Sign up now and get a free gift at daretobelievebig.com. So I wanna read that, that scripture to you one more time to fully for you to grasp that the old ways don't work in the new things and gifts that God are giving you, that is giving you. And this is what it says in Luke 5, verse 36. And he gave them this illustration. No one rips up a new garment to make patches for an old worn out once if you tear up the new to make a patch for the old it will not match the old garment and who pours new wine into an old wineskin if someone did the old wineskin would burst and the new wine would be lost new wine must always be poured into new wineskins yet you say and this is important my friend the old ways are better and you refuse to even taste the new that it brings. To step into the new, you have to acquire the faith and stop the self-reliance with new ways to move forward. Because what worked in the best in the past becomes self-reliance and trust in you instead of what God wants to do next in your life. So how do you go about that? How do you do that? And what is it that it's going to take? Well, I first want to share that story with you that we were talking about. It's going to take faith. And we'll go to that faith in just a moment. Like I shared with you earlier, when I would be walking through the vineyards, it took hope, believe in hope what is next. It took abundance that Jesus is talking about. It took the abundance, the smile, the warmth, the joy, the love, the truth that I wanted more of to share that with you. And it 
took starting to say, I'm going to imagine it. Because hope is the imagination that you're hoping for, that you want. So I imagined being on stages. I imagined to travel all over the world. I imagined books. I imagined sharing the glory of God. I imagined people getting healed. I imagined all of it. And one day in a dream not too long ago, when I stopped the imagination, I had this dream that somebody needed to be healed because Jesus has already paid the price for that. And while I'm in bed, my mind is going, well, Lord, not everyone gets healed. And he rebuked me. And he said right there, he says, says who, Barbara? Says who? When Jesus was in, on earth, everyone was touched by him and healed that asked for it. And that's true. That's true. He even went to people that didn't ask. So it is me that is working in old wineskin instead of saying, Lord, let's do this. So we bought this apartment complex. And then the moment things become tough and a struggle and they do not go the way you want them to go, it's so easy to say, I made a mistake. We had two tenants growing marijuana right in the building. The bottom ceiling was hanging and needed to be fixed. They left a big can, huge amount of oil or grease in it that we have to clean up and deal with. We had the front tenant that is a drug dealer with her two sons who have had several arrests and the door has been busted in three times. When I asked the old owner at the time, how come this door has been busted open? She says, oh, we're not sure. Well, the police had busted in three times. So instead of having this great old, old wonderful inheritance with everything just falling in our lap, which still is the case. Now we saw problem and problem and more problems. And we had the sleepless nights and we had the struggles. But in that process, instead of saying it's all falling apart, I started saying, this land is God's land. I'm going to anoint it. And I did. And my husband, who said, I am no longer growing in my faith in where we are living. Know that this is the way we need to move forward, to step into new ways, to trust God, to grow in our faith, to believe for what he wants to do next. So we have given this land to the Lord. We're praying for the tenants. We're believing. And yes, we are doing what it needs to do to make that place safe. The exciting part in it is that I caught myself that I was starting to fall in the process of acquiring the property in some old ways because I went by what I saw instead of what I knew the Lord had answered my prayer for. So we have to step into faith. Which takes us to Hebrews chapter 11. And this is what it says. Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. I want you, my friend, to grasp this because this is very important. It says now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. So I would like you right now to imagine, to completely do what you're longing to do within God's will. Just close your eyes for a minute. Imagine what you can do for the Lord. I know the Lord, the Holy Spirit just showed you some things. And I know some, are, some of you are nation changers. And in your mind, you think I am nothing, but that used to be me. Remember I said I'm busy all the time? Well, guess what happens when you say I have no time. I don't know how to get there. The funding is not available. When I said that, guess what happened to me? Every single night, every night I was confronted and taunted by the devil saying to me, you didn't work much for God today, did you? You didn't get to work that book chapter you were talking about. You put everything first but God. You never got to it. You would watch 30 minutes of TV, 
but only five minutes and fall asleep on your Bible, didn't you? There was no time to even read it. And this happened over and over and over again. But the change, my friend, happened. When I started to declare, when I started to degree, Psalm 118, verse 24a, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And a switch changed to my attitude into gratitude that I started to recognize that my own shortfall was the words I proclaimed over my life, the Satan was feeding into, I became proud of, and then I was taunted by it at night. So I don't want you to do that. If you didn't get everything done at night, if you didn't spend as much time with the God as you meant to, tomorrow is a new day and make wise choices in how to get there. Start reading a book a day before you even turn that television on. Again, I want to tell you, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things longed for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. I want to share with you more in the next show about this. And I am excited to share with you how to step into the faith and give you clarity and direction in how to do this. If you want us to pray for you, call us 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org. God loves you. He doesn't want to leave you in the rut and he has bigger plans for you than you can even imagine. Join the club. The underlining emotions that you experience when parenting gets stressful and painful. And then you choose to become a teenager coach. Yeah. That seems harder. Yeah. And yeah, that seems a whole lot harder. I love being a pastor. I mean, I was in a lot of fear, a lot of scary stuff. Be aware of this. Yeah. Be aware of that. You're also going to get a lot of people like me being like, hey, make sure you talk to your kids about this. And uh. don't forget <laughs> to talk to your kids about that. To um, help them have natural consequences in their life to help them prepare them for the real world. world.